Hi everyone, I'm Josie from Castells Cupcakes and Bakes and today we're going to do a jam sponge in a slow cooker. Yeah, you can bake and make the meanest jam sponge and we're doing that as part of the Hub Pot project for the Hub Foundation. I promise you today, right, I'm going to make you a baker. Um, I have been baking now for around about 14, 15 years. Um, and this year I started uh, my very own business called Castiles Cupcakes and Bakes, where I provide um, cupcakes, celebration cakes, wedding cakes, cookies, uh, rice crispy treats, sugar cookies, you name it, you can get it. Um, so, Baking seems to be everybody's arch nemesis and it really doesn't need to be, particularly when you're cooking in a slow cooker, because a slow cooker does it all for you. Um, and you're gonna get the most beautiful moist sponge cakes when you make them in a slow cooker, let me tell you. They don't look the prettiest, but once it goes down, it doesn't really matter, does it? So let's begin. We're gonna start off um, with your slow cooker by greasing your um, pot. The reason we need to grease your pot is because it's on for so long, particularly with a jam sponge, you don't really want that jam getting stuck all on the bottom and all around the sides. And believe you me, trying to get that off afterwards is an absolute blooming nightmare. But there is a little bit of a trick to doing a real good grease because you can just put butter in your pot. If you do that, you're still going to get a little bit of that sticky jam mess in the bottom of your pot. So what we're going to do is we are going to really um, grab, if you can, with a pastry brush. I find the silicone one the better because you don't get any, you know, the hairy, strawy one. Sometimes you can have buy them and the straw gets left in your pot. So a nice silicone uh, pastry brush and just rub it around um, your pot. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? So we're getting it rubbed in um, your pot. Now, make sure you've gone up all the sides because your steam's going to bring that butter down um, as it starts to cook. So go all around the base and all around the sides if you can. I use um, a margarine and um, this margarine is one that I brought from Lidl which is just lovely to work with. So here we go, really, really, really cover all that pot in your, in your margarine, okay? Once you've done that, you're going to take some plain flour um, and you're just going to sprinkle it on the base of your pot, okay? And just try and get the whole base covered in the flour. It's not going to stay in here, so don't worry, because that can create a real dry cake. But what we're going to do is we're going to pat all of that flour out and we're going to push it around the sides of your base so that you just get a light coating of flour around the side. So you can see it's come off the bottom there, the base of your pot, oops. And um, the messier the better the baking, that's all I can say. The messier a bake, the best the cake. Is that, is that right? That did, didn't it? Like that. Um, okay, so really, really cover that butter, okay? I'm just gonna go and empty this flour now in the sink, what's left. Okie dokie. So we've got a now a nicely coated stock pot ready for a gorgeous sponge. So you wanna put, this is just literally an all-in-one method for your slow cooker. When it's not in a slow cooker, it can get a bit techy. But for this, it's dead easy. So we're just gonna chuck everything all in. There is one method, and that's putting in your wet ingredients first, and then adding in your dry ingredients after, because it just makes it really easy. And we start off with your, well, when I say it makes it really easy for you, it's just so that you're not manually handling all the time, especially if you haven't got a, a mixer, because this recipe as well, you don't need a hand mix for. Um, I've purposely done that. You could use a mixer if you've got one, um, and trust me, it will be a lot easier. Um, to do. However, I'm going to show you that you don't need a mixer and you can still make the loveliest, most fluffiest sponge ever that the kids and yourselves are going to love. Okay, so we're going to start with the butter. It is all room temperature, so I took the butter out this morning, it's about eight o'clock in the morning when I was getting the kids ready for school. And um, and so it's literally, you can put your finger in it and your, your, your marge is uh, ready to um, squidge. 
So you're just gonna rub that around your bowl so that you've not got any lumps in it. It's just nice and smooth. So, started with your butter. We're then gonna add, um, this isn't really a wet ingredient, is it? We're gonna add the sugar. And the reason I'm gonna add that is it will really bond this butter together. And again, if there are any lumps in there, it kind of like pumices the butter so you can get all your dead skin cells off, obviously not in your cake. But it'll pumice the butter to get rid of all those lumps out. So we're just gonna mix that butter and sugar together. Now I've used, 133 grams of sugar, and that's caster sugar. Now, if you haven't got caster sugar in, if you've got a little blitzer, you could use granulated sugar and blitz your granulated sugar for like 30 seconds to make that sugar a little bit finer. But I would recommend you use caster sugar. And then your butter is 133 grams. And I've always thought to myself, why on earth do you have like these specific amounts um, and obviously there is a lot of technicality to your baking but um, a little secret that my mother-in-law shared with me is she said Joe, weigh your eggs weigh your eggs in the shells and whatever those weights are use your butter your sugar and your flour at the same measurement so my eggs when i measured them this morning were 133 grams so not when they've had the shells taken off but when you're uh, weighing them with the shells on um, this will serve around about four, um, four hungry tummies. I would say I have friends over the weekend when I was like trialing this on them and there were eight of us and there was still plenty of sponge to go around. So, um, and that was around the same measurement. So 133 um, grams of um, egg. So we've then got 133 grams of butter and 133 grams of caster sugar. So uh, with your caster sugar and your butter now, it should be kind of like a nice smooth consistency. So I'm just going to show you that again now. So it's kind of like really smooth on your brush. You want to make sure it's all blended together and it's gone like a nice um, creamy colour. So it's not yellow anymore, your marge isn't. It's a nice cream colour now and it's all bonded together. Um, now I have used a spatula to do this because um, it seems to make it easier. Do you know what works as good as a spatula if you haven't got one? A wooden spoon. So if you've got a wooden spoon in, it does the trick as well. If anything, it just find it, I find it easier with a spatula because I can scrape all the sides down. I think a wooden spoon works better. It's just hard to scrape those sides down. Okay, so to the um, sugar and to the um, margarine, we're gonna add in our vanilla. Now, the more vanilla, the better, but I love flavor. I'm all about the flavors. If you've watched any of the other videos, it's all about the flavor. So I would say in here, I've got around about three tablespoons of vanilla and, and, and it's, <laughs> Lovely. That's a lot of vanilla for a, uh, a sponge. You probably, if you don't like it too vanilla-y, one um, teaspoon will be plenty. Um, again, it depends on how much you're spending on your vanilla as well. You probably want to be a bit more sparingly if, if you're spending a lot of money on your vanilla. But the better the vanilla, the more you spend on your vanilla, the better the quality, to be honest, and you don't need as much. Um, okay, so we're just going to mix that vanilla into our butter and the sugar and just blend that all in while you're mixing so it's just now we can't even see the vanilla in there and it's just your your mixture ready for the eggs so we're going to add in some eggs now so these were both weighed i've taken the shell out they were 133 two eggs large eggs and they're going into the mixture um again normally i'd add one egg in a time if i was doing a normal bake with this you can just whack it all in now, you might want to grab a whisk for this. I'm purposely not using a whisk for you if it is that you haven't got one. But um, if you've got a whisk, it would just bring your ingredients together really, really well. However, because that bake in your slow cooker is baking for such a long time, it'll all come together beautifully anyway, because it's got plenty of time to melt. The, the difficulty you have when you're baking a cake is over mixing. Over mixing is a baker's worst nightmare. You wanna make sure you get that timed perfectly for a lovely fluffy sponge. But with a slow cooker, you're getting the moisture in it and it's the moisture that's bringing that cake together. The chances of you having a dry sponge when you're using a slow cooker are very, very slim. Okay, 
So I'm going to show you the consistency of this now. It, um, it starts off a bit scrambled eggy, so it looks a bit scrambled eggy. And actually, if it is still a bit scrambled eggy at this stage, do not worry. As long as all your ingredients are room temperature, you'll be absolutely fine. So the eggs, I did get your eggs out this morning as well, and I cracked them open. Um, at, uh, yeah, it was about eight o'clock, so they've just been sat in the bar from eight o'clock. The house is really cool, so I haven't worried too much about it. And you are pretty much guarantee that they've gone to room temperature. I wouldn't recommend you keeping your eggs out any longer than that. So it's not looking too scrambled eggy now. Not sure if you can see that. It's just like a nice, smooth mixture. But when we add this um, flour to, when we add the flour into this, you're gonna see that it's gonna smoothen out. So, now the dry ingredient is gonna be your um, self-raising flour. And again, it's 133 grams of self-raising flour. So I am just gonna pop in half of the 133. So half of the flour into that, and I'm just gonna lightly fold that into this mixture. This is probably as technical as it gets actually, because if we do do too many folds with your self-raising flour, what you're gonna do is you're gonna toughen the proteins that are in that self-raising flour. So just lightly fold and that's it, not too much fold. So we're gonna add in the second part of a flour and just slowly and lightly fold. Not too much, just as long as it's all come together in your bowl, then you are good to go. Of course, if you're using a hand mixer, it's gonna go a lot quicker. So you're gonna notice that your, um, your batter's gonna to come together a lot quicker. As soon as you see that batter coming together when you're in a mixer, stop. Just stop. Um, you don't need to um, keep going and going and going. You just wanna make sure that all those, all those ingredients have combined together perfectly. That's it. So that was probably no more than 30 seconds. Uh, just going to scrape the sides, just a little bit of flour there on the sides, and I'm just going to show you the texture of that batter. It's kind of just holding itself on. There we go. So, next thing we're going to add to this, just to add to that flavour, but also to add to um, the moisture of your sponge, is some double cream. Now then, you could use full fat um, whole milk, um, you could use that. Instead, I use double cream, again, just to make your sponge a little bit more opulent and luxurious. So let's pop in our double cream. Now your double cream, you wanna take that, if you can, straight from the fridge, because it's going in last and it's going in a slow cooker. So um, don't have that hanging around, because your, your double cream can turn quite quickly. And I'm popping in here around three tablespoons of double cream. If it was a standard bake, I'd use slightly less, but because this is gonna be cooking for quite a long time, we don't want it to have evaporated too much. So actually, don't worry if it looks like too wet a batter, because it will come good, trust me. Okay, so I've probably spent about 10 seconds stirring that in. Again, I just wanted to combine that cream into your batter because, um, again, it's all about that over mixing. We don't want to overwork those proteins in the, in the flour. Okay, so I'm just going to show you your consistency. It's now really, really smooth. If you are at um, scrambled egg at this stage, I don't know how you could have done that. You've gone wrong, chuck it in the bin and start again. All right, um, so um, batter done. We're going to now take all the ingredients into the slow cooker. Now, obviously, we couldn't do that in the slow cooker because I've needed to grease your um, your pot. So um, it would be lovely wouldn't it, if it was all in one pot. And we need to put the jam at the bottom of this sponge. So we've now grabbed in our grease pot and we're going to add to that our jam. Um, now this one is a Hartley's strawberry seedless jam. Um, you can put in um, any flavour jams, any conserves in here. Um, I've made my own um, compotes to go in here. Your lemon curds can go in here. Golden syrup 
is sublime so you can have a nice golden syrupy sponge this recipe is so versatile you can make um you can make so many different flavors in that batter there you could add in some cinnamon and some mixed spice and then you've got a nice little gingerbread sponge um, and you could add in maybe some nice salty caramel at the bottom of that or golden syrup or even dark trickle um, you really can go to town with it so um, i would say experiment the jam now is all at the bottom. I've used a whole jar of jam. Um, again, because it does really reduce down because you're gonna cook this on high for around about an hour and a half um, to two hours. Um, and what we don't wanna happen is it's stick into the pan if you've only put a little bit in there. So I have put um, a whole jar in there. Because the moisture is going to go into your sponge, the jam kind of oozes up the sides. So everybody's guaranteed to have a real lovely piece of jam sponge. Okay, so we're now going to add in our batter. Again, no technicalities to this, to scrape down your sides and just kind of pour it in the middle. You just want to go in the middle of the pot so that it's not sliding down the side of that grease that you've just done and you're wasting all that hard work. So just try and pop it in the middle. Doesn't matter if it's not touching the sides because it's going to expand because you put that self-raising flour in. So just really get it all in the middle of that bowl and then it'll just fall into place. A little baking perfection. Okay, so let's just give that a little nudge. That's it, that's as technical as your bake gets. We're now gonna put the lid on this. We're gonna put it on a hot heat um, on your slate cooker for, I would say, put your alarm on for an hour. Just have a look at it. Dip in um, a knife. If the knife comes out and it's still wet, you are not done. So put the lid back on and perhaps check in on your slow cooker, still on a hot heat every 15 minutes. Once you pop that knife in, it comes out and there's nothing on that knife, your bake's ready to rock and roll and you're ready to get stuck in. So I'm gonna pop this on now for an hour, set me alarm, gonna see how we go on. See you in a bit. So I have just grabbed our um, jam sponge. Now then, I'm gonna have to say, it doesn't look the sexiest, it doesn't, but it will taste the bomb. All right, so let's tuck in to this sponge, the jam. Oh yeah, it's nice and gooey all like down the sides. <laughs> Ready, and when you cut into, oh yeah. So there's a bit of give there, which is good. That means we're gonna get a nice, good, fluffy bake. Reminds you of like old school pudding. That gorgeous stuff that you had with all the custard and all these lovely, already syrupy, jammy juices. Just gonna go all over that sponge. I would say that's a pretty decent portion and we could get most certainly six portions out of that. What we're saying, yeah, that's a good portion for me. I mean, I could probably eat the whole pot, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, good portion there. And what better to add to a nice bit of jam sponge than a bit of vanilla double cream. So let's get some of that poured on as well. Just a bit of double cream and I've popped a bit of vanilla essence in there. Drizzled all over your sponge. I'm gonna have to taste this one. I'm sorry, this is just, please don't judge me, but how can you not have a taste? of jam sponge and cream. Oh yeah, definitely like that jam sponge at school that you absolutely loved. Not the one that was rubbery that you didn't like, but the one that was divine. Enjoy your jam sponge. I hope you enjoy baking. It's my passion, absolutely love it. And this is one that you can master without fail. Thanks a lot.